Hello you bunch of tankers and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the last of the cold steel tanks. Uh, this is the Demolisher T28 prototype. I'm sorry it's taking so long to get this out there, but between Christmas and New Year and other things, I've just not had time at all to get on with this one. And it's kind of been one I'm dreading a little bit. I'm not much of a uh, TD player. I'm not really a huge fan of slow vehicles, but I really wanted to get the review out there. I wanted to do what I said I was going to do. That's how 2020 is going to be. If I say I'm doing it, I'm actually going to do it. And yeah, I mean, it's not bad for the purpose of this video because there's so little difference between this and its Tech Tree variant. Um, I, I'm actually going to do a comparison between the two. I've done that before in previous videos. I didn't for the uh, Eradicator or the Earthshaker, but this one I will be comparing it to the Tech Tree T28 prototype. Now, this, like the other Cold Steel vehicles, has a 75% crew XP boost, 50% silver, and 15% XP boost. So, if you want to train crews, oh yeah, you could train some American crews really, really, really quickly in this thing, which really is quite nice, I'm not going to lie to you, it is quite nice, but if you've got a free Hellcat 105 or a free Thunderbolt from the um, year-long games, you know, lower tiers usually have higher XP bonuses, so if you don't want to buy this, you've already got two tanks you can train crews with pretty well for free, I mean, the Thunderbolt's a solid tank, the 105 Hellcat's pretty good fun, um, but yeah, so... What do I think of this tank? Um, like I say, it's not really for me. It's it's quite a brawler, top tier. It is quite a brawler. But uh, the, the gameplay style, I'm a medium man, as you know. But for the interest of this video, I have been out playing it. And I want to sort of go through the pros and cons. So the setup I've got on this um, is a very basic one. I've got a gun line drive just to try and help the uh, aim time vents. With it being an autoloader, you can't fit a rammer, so I've fitted vents to not only get the aim time down, but also the reload time down as well, and improving my camera rating and your view range. I've also put binos on this. Um, you know, it is a TD, and it's it's not got bad camouflage, but you do want your binos. You want to be able to see your prey so that you can strike death and fury upon them. So uh, that's kind of what I've gone with. And, yeah, it, it's been working okay for me. I may swap out uh, the binos for optics, as I do tend to find myself on the move quite a lot, trying to follow the front line to, to make sure I'm getting that damage and putting the gun to good work and using the autoloader. So you could swap that out for optics if you wanted to. Um, supplies, pretty basic. I carry 12... APCR rounds and mainly AP. I don't carry the HE. As I explained with the Eradicator, you've got such a long reload on that three-shot autoloader that by the time that target you want to use HE on has presented itself, it's either gone, disappeared from view range, and then you've got to go through another reload cycle to get your AP or your APCR back in. Small repair kit, small first aid kit, and I am running a premium consumable on this. It is a tier 8 with 50% silver bonus, so you can make money back on it, but I need all the help I can get, and case of cola, 10% to all crew skills. Again, that's your aim time coming down, your view range going up, your reload getting faster. So for me, I use that. You could use fire extinguisher if you wanted to. It is quite a large, slow tank. Artillery will focus it if it sees it because it is quite an easy target, you know. Trying to duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Kind of difficult in the T28 Proto. Uh, completely the same in the Demolisher. I have put camouflage on it. Crew skills. This is a crew, the John McLean crew, that I'm training up to put back into a Pershing. So at the minute, I only have Sixth Sense, Repairs, and Situational Awareness. I will probably swap out Situational Awareness for Brothers in Arms, again, to up everything. Retrain situa Situational Awareness. I've also got Camouflage training at the minute. I'm basically going for all the sneaky sp skills and the view range skills. So I'll be going for Situational Awareness, Camouflage, Recon. Then I'll be getting things like Green Thumb. Um, maybe Silent Driving, not too sure. I'm still finding my way into the TDs, you know, as a, a full-time playstyle. Um, but this just seems to be working for me uh, at, at right now. With playing things like the Comet and stuff, you want to be sneaky, in the, like I said, with the Japanese medium line. So sneaky sort of play, I am I am all right with. I've, I've got my eye in on the sneaky play. It's just that patience thing. And you will need patience with a tank like this. You've got to wait for your targets. You know, you can't go chasing them around the battlefield. That's not how it works. Now, this thing is is 
very well armoured. What we'll do now is go into the armour inspector and then we'll go into the gameplay with the stats like we normally do. So I'll see you there in a second. Okay, so armour wise. Like I said, this thing is pretty nicely armoured, to be honest with you, for a TD. It's not uh, it's not a glass cannon like a charioteer or like a ordace, you know, something like that. Um, the wiki stats show the hull on the front is 203, 51 on the side and 51 on the rear. The turret, again at the front, 203, 127 on the side and 102 on the rear. Now that is identical to the tech tree variant and it's, it's not bad at all to be honest when you are top tier in this thing you can really really bully with that frontal armor um, the other thing you've got to be aware of with this if you've not played the 28 proto it has 143 degrees of gun arc on either side so it doesn't go all the way around it stops before it gets to the engine deck something to bear in mind if you are being circled you need to back up to a rock so that back end is flush against a rock and then you can use your turret to reverse but, to be honest with you, you'll probably be dead by then because it's quite slow. Right, so armour-wise, like I say, it's 203 on the front of the hull. Yes, it is. It's slightly angled, as you can see. There's not a lot there, but it isn't completely flat. So you do actually get a little bit of effective armour, bringing it up to 235. Now, much like I've mentioned in other videos, there's a thing about American hulls that have machine guns in the hull. And that is always weaker much like the rest of the T-Series of the heavies, the 29, the 24, the 34, the 32, the 30. The machine gun port is a weak point. Now, at range, obviously, RNG is going to have a massive factor on this because you've got damage drop-off, but also because of the fact that RNG means your shots can go pretty much anywhere around there. So it is, it is a target up close that you always need to be aiming for when you come across one of these, but from a distance, you know, still aim for it, but RNG may mess you up. Like I say, to, it's, it does bring up some quite nice numbers. Using the full gun depression as well, if you can get yourself in a little hole, you know, it's, you're over 260. It's still quite nice. It's not going to save you against 10, tier 10 tanks. It's also going to save you against a lot of the heat. Um, but... When you are top tier, this thing can really, really bully tanks. And I mean really, really bully them. You can play this thing like a heavy when you are top tier, which is quite entertaining, to be honest with you. Turret, again, at the front, very strong. Gun mantlet, absolutely fantastic figures. You know, over the 300s, it's, it is spaced armor, so it's going to absorb that heat as well. Um, obviously, it's not going to absorb all of a hesh round, but it is going to help you hugely, hugely if you are hull down or if you're at a nice distance, it's going to work well. 203 mil is on just around the gun mantlet. Again, not a huge angle, but it is angled, giving you some effective armor. And like I say, when you're on full gun depression, it's only going to bring it up more. So pretty much the same kind of angle as the hull. Now, it doesn't get much softer around the edges. As you can see, the turret is actually angled quite nicely to be honest 235 same as on the front plate yes it gets a little bit lower towards the front these are the areas you want to be aiming for when you come across one of these frontally um, you can go through there quite nicely in lower tier tanks you may have to use premium rounds but a lot of people are going to aim for the capolas and the capolas are very very strong they are they can't be overmatched and they are quite strong so you are going to be looking at premium rounds to get through these things frontally Again, around the gun mantlet is strong, and as it tapers out, it doesn't get much weaker. I mean, round the cheeks, obviously, due to the effective angle, you're over 300, but round here is where you want to be shooting. So just bear that in mind. Sides, 51 on the hull and 127 on the side. Again, it is angled, so you are getting some fairly decent figures, but top tier tanks are going to be through it. You can't be using your armor in the same way you can when you're top tier. The other thing to remember as well, if someone's got you side on, your ammo racks are behind there. Just at the rear of the turret, same as like a T-34 or a T-29, and they're also bang on in the side there as well. So just bear that in mind. 50 mil on the side, and your ammo racks are smack bang in the middle, much like a, a, a Tiger. So just something to uh, be wary of. Rear of the yeah, rear of the hull is always going to be weak. Rear, rear of the turret, not too bad. Like I say, it is 102 millimeters. It brings up on the official stats. We've got 101 here. Um, there must just be an odd point where it's 102 millimeters. But obviously, rear of the turret, if you're getting hit there, it's all gone wrong, hasn't it? You know, let's let's be honest. 
And again, on the side, the Capolas, don't go aiming for the Capolas at the side. They're still pretty damn strong. You want to be aiming further back here where it gets a little bit weaker uh, or just lower down in sort of, let's call it the shot trap kind of area, shall we? Uh, but other than that, that's basically your armor. It is pretty damn strong frontally when you are top tier. Bottom tier, yeah, a lot of stuff is going to go through there. We all know tier 10, there's a lot of premium rounds flying about all over the place. But a lot of standard tanks are running APCR with very, very high pen. A lot of tier 9 mediums as well running the 105s. So just bear that in mind. Top tier, bully. Bottom tier, handback. Play it like a proper TD. Now let's get into the gameplay and we'll go through the stats like we normally do. I'll see you there in a second. So, as usual, we will go from the bottom and work our way up to the top. The Demolisher has 1,150 hit points, same as the T28 prototype. It has 810 horsepower, it weighs 66 tons, and it has a power-to-weight ratio of 12.2 brake horsepower per ton. So, it's slightly quicker than the 28 prototype. That thing's only got 780 horsepower. It weighs a ton less, but it's only got 11.8 brake horsepower per ton. So that is a little bit different. This thing's faster in forward and reverse. Forward, 30 kilometers an hour, and reverse, 12 kilometers an hour, compared to the Protos, 28 forward, 10 reverse. But the terrain resistances are very slightly different. So on this, you have 1.2 on hard, 1.5 on medium and 3.1 on soft so they're only slightly worse than the 28 proto but it kind of brings that power to weight ratio into a balance slightly with the tech tree variant um it's also got slower a, a slower hull traverse the hull traverse on this is 18 degrees per second and the turret traverse is the same at 18 degrees per second. That's the same as the tech tree as well. Now, this thing is quite sluggish, as you will see from the gameplay. Um, taking off, getting to the top speed, and the actual traverses of this thing, it is quite a sluggish tank. Now, anyone that's been through the 28 Proto will know exactly how this thing plays. Um, this is new to me, as I've not been down that line yet, but the traverse speed on this is extremely sluggish. The acceleration is extremely sluggish now what i was saying before when you're top tier and you want to be backing up your front line you can push with them that frontal armor will help you the slow mobility as well kind of calms you down a little bit from just being out the front getting ahead of everyone and pushing too far remember you're in an auto loader you don't want to be on your own in an auto loader you've got a long reload when them rounds are expelled you know, you feel great when you're letting them go, but when you're then on that reload and you're on your own, you are very, 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 very vulnerable. And this thing can easily be circled and easily be flanked. So that is something to be very, very wary about. Always have a rock nearby to back into if you're being circled, but always make sure you're with your teammates. Use them like spaced armor. Make sure you've got yourself in a nice position where you can get your shots away and use the alpha potential, but at the same time, just be aware, you aren't going to be backing out of trouble very quickly. Now, the view range on this, it's okay. Uh, it's it's up there with the rest of the sort of things in its class, like the um, the Charioteer, the Bison, um, the 28, the, the Tech 3 28 Proto uh, Charioteer. It's got a view range of 380 meters, and it also has a signal range of 745 meters. That's identical to the Tech 3 variant. Now, with this being a TD, normally camouflage don't really talk about, but on this we will. The camo rating on this stationary is 0.22, and on the move is 0.13. Now, I did mention this in the Eradicator. These tanks come painted, but for you to get a camouflage bonus, you have got to apply your own sets of camouflage. Now, with that camo rating being very low, and it is very low, when you think the Audace is at 0.38 and the Charioteer is at 0.36, you know, this is quite a bulky tank, so its camo rating is quite low. You may want to swap out the vents for camo net. Depending on how you want to play it, I, I do play quite aggressively, which is a, a terrible trait, but I do play quite aggressively, so for me, I, I liked having the binos, but for the nets... It wasn't for me. I was always on the move too much to make use of them. But maybe I will give that a go um, and in a future video sort of discuss the differences that I found when doing it. Um, now, that is identical to the Tech Tree variant. Of course it is, because it's the exact same tank in size and 
shape. Now onto the main bit. Remember, this thing is pretty much a reskin. The big difference is this has a 105mm three-shot autoloader. Much like the 32A Proto, it is 105mm. Now, I don't really like it. Its pen, I feel, is very low for its tier in comparison to other tanks, in comparison to its tech tree variant. The shell speed's very, very slow, and it's got a long old reload. Um, so, but let's get into it. You've got a rate of fire of 6.66 rounds per minute with a 22 second reload on the main clip, 2.5 second interclip reloaded between the three shots, giving you a DPM of 2133. Now, this is a lot lower than the Tech Tree variant's single shot 120 mil. That thing's got a DPM of 2376 just mainly down to its alpha but more than anything it's got better pen now on this you have got penetration on your AP of 198 APCR is 245 and the HE is 53 again I don't carry HE just because of having that 22 second reload if that target's disappeared and the next thing you come across is a heavy tank you're gonna wish you had the AP loaded so I don't bother with it your alpha on them rounds 320 on the AP, 320 on the APCR, and 420 on the HE. Now, this thing has got a clip potential of 960. So, you know, at tier 8, if you've got things that are sort of half health, um, maybe slightly lower, you potentially can clip them out as long as you're going for weak spots because the pen, I find, is extremely low. In comparison to other tanks, the same tier, running a 105mm, it is, it is pretty damn low, to be honest. So, for example, the Charioteer, yeah, that fires APCR as standard, but that thing's got 268 pen. The Tech Tree variant of this has got 248. Yes, it's a 120, but things like the Audace, that's running 105. That's got 260 millimeters of pen. So, it is quite low pen. It is fairly nice alpha in that clip potential but again that is lower than all the other tanks that i've selected so the charioteer is an alpha of 390 or dace is 390 and the tech tree variant of this has an alpha of 400 and it reloads it twice as fast the other thing is not only have you got low pen but when you're um leading targets it's got quite slow shell velocity so on your ap you've got 945 meters per second, which is the same as the HE at 945 meters per second. APCR does go up slightly at 1,181 1, 1, meters per second. So, you know, APCR, you can lead your shots a little bit better. It does have 0.35 accuracy at 100 meters, which is not actually all that bad. When you think the Eradicator is 0.34, it's actually not too bad for a 105 auto-loading gun. Um, it is acceptable. It can be a little bit derpy. You really, really have got to let them shots aim in, and you've got to make sure that you're stationary when you're firing. Um, otherwise, it will troll you. It will derp you quite a lot. So just bear that in mind. Saying that, it's still better than the Tech Tree variant. Now, I mean, that thing's 0.38, which it doesn't seem a lot, but it... You know, it does make a difference when you're on the battlefield. But yeah, make sure you're aimed in. I mean, you should do that anyway, to be honest with you. That, that should be a, a good habit to be in. Um, speaking of aim time, it's not bad, actually. 2.1 second aim time, so slightly faster than a chariot here. Um, it will kind of feel a bit like an age, but you've got to remember, your interclick reload is 2.5 seconds, which means you will be aimed in by the time that next shot is ready to go which is a good thing because it saves that temptation to just fire. Even though it's not fully damaged, you're going, ah, oh, well, RNG might be all right. I, I, I'm sure this will go in. This way, though, is quite nice. Having that faster aim time than your interclick reload means you will be fully aimed in and ready to fire that next shot once it's shoved down the pipe and ready to go. You have got a gun depression of 10 degrees, which is pretty nice, uh, and gun elevation of plus 15 which again is pretty nice you, you can get things that are trying to shoot from above that minus 10 meaning you can use ridges and you can get it on full gun depression just to try and bring up that frontal armor as much as you can remember when that 
tank is rocked back and you're off full gun depression, your effective armor does go up, which will encourage a lot more bounces. Just keep that machine gun port nicely covered up so it's not a horrible little glaring weak spot sticking out. And that's, guys, <coughs> that is it for the stats. Overall, my opinion of this tank, it's not for me. It, honestly, it's not for me. Like I said, out of the three tanks, the Centurion is the best one. <clears throat> the Eradicator is next. But the Eradicator is next because this one just is not as good. In my opinion, if you want a T28 prototype, just grind out a T28 prototype for free. That autoloader will wreak havoc with you at times. It really will derp you quite a lot. Like all these three-shot autoloaders, like I, I've said with the others that I've reviewed. They all seem a little bit derpy. Now, a lot of it I do put down to my aggressive playstyle, but like I say, when you top tier, I've just found it best to push with my heavies and, and bully as much as I can. Using them as a shield, once I'm reloaded, push forward, get three shots into someone's flank, and then just work back behind them and let that 22 second reload go off. It's a pretty good example of it here. We managed to burst out some damage into this M103. Now, if I was alone, I'd probably be in quite a lot of trouble. But because I've got that IS-3, he's causing damage as well. I'm, I'm not too scared. And there we go. He gets taken down by the STRV-103. Uh, sorry, the T-28 Proto. And that's what I mean. If you're on an autoloader, you don't want to be on your own for long. That... Putting them three shots into that M103, you know, he's, he's a tank that's a tier higher. That felt absolutely fantastic. Once then three shots were, were over, um, my dick kind of shriveled up a little bit, and I was like, uh-oh, now I'm in trouble. You know, kind of like giving a bully some abuse, and then he turns around to give you a kicking. So just bear that in mind. Don't run off on your own. Make sure you stick. If you are going to push out aggressively like me, stick with a pack. Stick with a group. If you're going to hang back and play the traditional TD role, not a problem because you've given yourself somewhere where you can move back. You're not going to be sat out in the open, not with the low camera rating that this thing has for a TD. You know, you're going to be playing it safe because you're not stupid like I am. That's, I mean, that's true for everything, isn't it? But there you go, guys. That's the T28 prototype demolisher. Now, it will come in the bundle. I really wouldn't recommend buying it on its own. I just don't think it's worth the cash value that it's set at. Um, obviously, it comes up on the Tankpedia as 11550 If you buy it in a package, it does work out cheaper if you get the three of them in the bundle. It won't be as cheap as when PlayStation messed it up and I bought mine, and you basically paid less for all three than you do for one tank. Will they ever come on sale again? Probably. The fact that uh, they put a notice out saying limited edition doesn't mean it won't be sold again it just means they're only available for a limited period of time it tells me at some point these things will come back on sale again how long and when i don't know i don't have that information so i couldn't tell you but just bear in mind they probably will be on sale again so that's something to take away you don't have to rush out and buy them straight away again like i say this is not one that i would really isn't. If you, if you really wanted one, buy the Earthshaker because it is the best of the bunch. It's it's, mo it's not got the best mobility but it is flexible in situations like most Centurions are. It can be quite flexible. It's easy to work with. It's got that beautiful hesh and it's got really, really nice penetration. Especially for its tier. This on the other hand, I feel the pen lets it down slightly, which is good because it balances it out and means it's not better than its tech tree variant, which no premium tank should ever be in my opinion, but it does balance it out. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the review, if you did give me a like, if you didn't, don't be afraid to press, press the down vote, thumbs down thing. If you aren't subscribed, please do, and make sure you ring the bell to get notified when my content goes up so you can see it straight away. But thank you all for watching so much. Again, I apologise for how long the Demolisher review got to get out. But, you know, it's that time of year we've all been busy. And until next time, guys, have fun, stay safe, and I will see you all soon.